across, across, to, to, across, across. Go down to <laughs> Cape Town where Helen Zilla is waiting. She's got an appointment. She's made time for us, and we'll come back to finish our discussion on the market. So thanks to Helen Zilla. She's the former DA leader now. It's funny to speak of her as the former DA leader. Good evening to you, Helen. What's it feel like being the outgone DA leader? Hi, David. It feels very good. I think the timing was right. I think the mood was right. And as Mornay Duplessis said, it's always best if a captain walks off the field when people are saying, why is she going already, rather than being on the field with people saying, why is she still there? So I think the moment in retrospect will have been right. It's very difficult to judge these things. But I have great depth of leadership, breadth of leadership in the DA and so many people are so capable that it mm. makes me feel really good. Mm. Helen, of course, uh, many South Africans were watching uh, the Congress that led to the Maimane victory. However, there have been a few voices that uh, appear to be unhappy with the outcome. To what extent has a Maimane win perhaps lost you some of uh, your core traditionally white supporters who haven't bought into this idea of a black-led DA? Well, if there are any South Africans who believe that leadership depends on the color of one's skin, they don't really belong in the Democratic Alliance. What we're looking for is outstanding leadership. We're looking for vision. We're looking for ability. We're looking for passion. We're looking for hard work. We're looking for emotional intelligence. And Musi happens to be all of those things, and he's black. Now, the point is we don't want any form of racism in the DA. And we want a party for all the people who want to come together and build a new majority on the basis of shared values. That's our job in the Democratic Alliance. And Musi epitomizes that. Helen, you're going to be in an interesting position. You remain the Premier, which you were elected to again last year. You're in office for several years to come. You're doing a real political job in the sense of running a province. The leader of the party, whoever he or she is in this country at the moment, uh, is not uh, running a province. We see the possibility of a two centers of power developing here. You've got the real job. Uh, the leader nationally doesn't have that. Well, traditionally in de democratic systems, in parliamentary systems, you have the leader of the party and the leader of the party in parliament being the same person. So what was unusual about the Democratic Alliance was that I remained mayor of Cape Town while I was the leader and then premier of the Western Cape while I was the leader. And that was a bit of an exception. And that led to the two centers of power debate, one being in parliament and one being under the leadership in a different sphere of government. So I think that many people are pretty relieved that the position of parliamentary leader and mm. national leader of the party have been brought together again, as is the more traditional way of doing things in parliamentary democracies. Helen, what are you saying uh, to the party and perhaps what's the leadership communicating to the party with, uh, around the concerns of the youthfulness of Musi Maimani? There are many who are celebrating his youth, but there are also others that are questioning uh, his experience and his ability uh, to navigate a political landscape that can get complex very quickly at this tender age. Well, however old you are, you have to learn to navigate a very complex political landscape. Believe me, I learned that eight years ago when I became the leader of the Democratic Alliance. But actually, when you're the leader, what you have to be, you have to be prepared to work very hard. You have to be prepared to get on the cutting edge of issues. And you have to be prepared to listen to advice, but have good judgment to know whose advice to take seriously and who's not to. And those kinds of skills Musi has in spades. He works extraordinarily hard. He gets to the cutting edge of issues very, very quickly. He has a strong academic background. He's worked in business before. And he has strong opinions. He's a very strong leader. He leads from the front. But he also knows how to ask and seek advice, and he knows how to discern good, vi good advice from bad advice. There's a view that uh, the DA generally hasn't applied itself as much as it could have to the economy, to providing alternatives to what, let's face it, have not been successful ANC initiatives in terms of growth and job creation. Can we expect more application to the economy? 
Well, in fact, our entire election campaign in 2014 was focused on the economy, and it was done around our 8% growth and jobs plan, which was a very comprehensive and detailed economic plan. The irony is that it has a lot of similarities with the National Development Plan that Trevor Manuel and Cyril Ramaphosa produced. So there was a lot of convergence there. And that's why we said it's important to have the realignment of South African politics so that we can build a new majority around policies that make sense for the economy. That was the focus. So our primary focus has been the economy and growing a new majority around economic policies that create jobs. That's what we have to do in South Africa. The big problem is that even though the government sometimes pays lip service to some of those policies, they never introduce them. We do in the Western Cape, where we are focusing on the DA's 8% growth and jobs plan and uh, working on elements of it that a province can work on that is within its constitutional mandate very hard indeed. Helen, thank you so much for your time. A strong endorsement there of uh, the new leader of the Democratic Alliance, that's Musi Maimani, and a firm focus on jobs. That's the view coming from Helen Zilla, who's taken time out to join us from our Cape Town studio.